So a couple days ago, I went out to my local comic shop. It was just really to pick up the first issue of the Trials of Ultraman, since I'd already picked up all the issues from the Rise of Ultraman. And when I went to actually like purchase the comic, I saw something in the corner of my eye. It was on the lowest rung of the display, where all the new releases were, and it was another comic. And from only a glance, I thought it was like maybe an Ultraman variant cover or something. But when I looked at it like more closely, I realized it was something entirely different but it was very Ultraman inspired. So the series is called Ultra Mega, it's by Image Comics, it's made by James Heron who's worked on another series under Image called Rumble, and the colors are done by David Stewart, who has worked on Hellboy and a few other series that people might know. And if I was to compare this comic's art to another, I would probably have to say that Hellboy's art is probably the closest it's to, although Heron never worked on Hellboy and Stewart did, and Stewart's only doing the colors, Heron is the one who's doing all the art, he's the one who's behind the story, and there's a few other smaller people who have done work in the comic but it's mostly these two together with Heron being the main person who's in charge of this comic and I would have to say in terms of like what I've seen so far in this first issue there is a strong direction here and they are really keeping to what it is that they want to accomplish with this comic and that is a series that focuses on body horror and Ultraman. Now, as I've probably said a dozen times by now, this series is from Image Comics, which is where the Invincible animated series on Amazon comes from as a comic. Todd McFarlane's Little Baby Spawn got its start there, and of course, HBO's shambling cash cow The Walking Dead also came from Image as a comic. Now, the reason I bring up all of these series in particular is that all of them provided a fresh take on a concept that a lot of people probably may have been getting sick of at the time. I think well, to start off with The Walking Dead, for instance, we've already had tons and tons and tons of zombie stories at the time, and I think The Walking Dead was probably one of the most original at the time in comparison to something like, say, Left 4 Dead, Dawn of the Dead, stuff like that. Then, of course, Spawn, for its time compared to anything that was coming out of Marvel or DC, was definitely original in both its tone and style. Of course, ignoring the fact that McFarlane worked on Spider-Man and all that, but it's mostly his art style that carried over from his Spider-Man stuff, while more of the mature themes are really what Spawn is known for. And then looking at Invincible, it definitely, again, takes a lot of stuff from Marvel and DC, but it definitely rebrands them, repackages them, and gives a lot of interesting twists on it. Not in the let's subvert your expectations kind of way to give the audience an unsatisfying conclusion, I think. That each of these stories twists expectations, but in a way that is fulfilling for the audience and isn't done specifically to spite them. And of course, I'm not familiar with all the different business practices Image does. However, I've heard for the most part that they are pretty good for the, like how they handle creators and their properties and all that. And with the backlog of awesome work that they have done, I think Ultra Mega is another great addition to their lineup. Now, without going too much into spoilers about the series, I just want to give a brief summary of like three main kind of series that I think Ultra Mega draws a lot of inspiration from. So, of course, like the idea of a size changing spandex looking hero fighting kaiju is the clearest nod to Ultraman, and I think that goes without saying. And unlike any version of Ultraman, even Nexus, this universe is far darker and violent in tone, and it definitely gets the M rating that is on the back of this book. And again, without going too much into spoilers, it seems that there is a lot of Evangelion kind of inspiration in terms of where humanity is in its situation fighting these strange creatures that they really do not seem to understand and it seems that there is a lot of setup for a grander and grander mystery and we as the characters are discovering more about the kaiju we will discover things along with them and then lastly this might be like the least kind of apparent reference but in my opinion i think ultra mega draws a lot from fallout specifically old fallout so fallouts one and two uh, this is primarily due to the state of humanity towards the end of the comic and a lot of the rustic, post-apocalyptic kind of vibes it gives off. However, 
It's the humor that I think really kind of draws it to fall out in my opinion, and that is due to the fact that a lot of the humor is very dark. However, it's done in a way where the audience isn't supposed to be like, oh yeah, here's a joke, laugh now. It's very subtle and you'll have to read the comic a couple times to pick up on some of the little jokes as well as there are a little bit more tongue-in-cheek kind of things, but it's never in a way for it to just sort of be like, wait for the laugh track to appear for lack of a better term, but again, everything is still appropriately dark when it comes to the humor, and I like my dark humor. Finally, I just want to go over releases. When I had written this script, the issue, first issue had come out yesterday, March 17th, but as for issues 2 and 3, those are April 21st and May 19th for those two. And all the releases for those two are shown on Image's website, which I will have down in a link in the description. So if you want to order online, you can do that. Or if you've got a local comic shop, you can probably go over there and they'll probably have a few copies. Of course, this wasn't a big release, sadly. So most likely, if you go um, to any of those places, you'll probably find the comic there. I'm not sure if it's at like a Newberry Comics or any of the more like comic chains so that's something that y'all would have to do for yourself if you want to look for it in those places but probably the easiest place would be to go to image and order it from there and i really hope that you guys pick up the comic it's definitely an interesting one and it draws on a lot of things that like the tokusatsu community would really enjoy but with a lot more western dark bend to it but in a good way it's definitely not your standard happy-go-lucky stuff and schlock that we've been getting in terms of mainstream pop culture but as always guys i'm zimzilla and i'll see y'all next time